When you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. Alright, hello YouTube, and welcome back to the Grease Goblin YouTube channel. Today's video is a very serious and important video. It's going to be covering maybe the most important question or issue, theory, in all of A Song of Ice and Fire. On this channel, we've talked about John's parents. We've talked about Azor High a little bit. What do the others want? We, we, we've talked about all of these important things that could shape all of A Song of Ice and Fire and the story going forward. We have never talked about once the conspiracy of is Mace Tyrell actually a genius? Is he just playing the role of a fool? Today's video, we're going to go through the pros and cons of each side. And by the end of this video, I want you to make your decision. Is Mace Tyrell stupid? Or is he a low-key genius? Or is he somewhere in the middle? Before I give you my evidence for both sides, I really don't have a strong feeling towards either. Let me know what you guys think initially on Mace Tyrell as a character. Do you think he's just somebody that's got a great supporting cast like Marjorie, Elena, Willis, Loris? Do you think he's just in a good situation that he's just kind of not the one really calling the shots? Or do you think, low-key, he's been overlooked by the fan base? But yeah, let's get into the video. But before we do, if you guys like to like, subscribe, and comment, please do it up to channel grow. Which you might like this content as well. And let's get into the video. So, we are going to start with my list of pros for Mace Tyrell being a fool. Now, these are all of the things I could think about. I went on a couple, like forums talking about this topic and this is kind of what i found from each side and i kind of put in my own like thoughts to each but let's get into it so the pros for him being a fool now in the robert rebellion era mace tyrell famously sides with the targaryens and here's the thing mace tyrell could have won the war for the targaryens if mace tyrell had just joined his forces with the tyra or with the Targaryen loyalist force that Rhaegar had when he was going to the Trident, not only would they have been outnumbering Robert's forces by a ton, like, it would have been much more than it already was. I'm pretty sure in the normal canon, the Targaryens were already outnumbering the outnumbering Robert's forces, and they were actually about to break when um, Robert and Rhaegar meet, and then, like, their clash changes the entire, like, battle. If there was even more... I mean, think about it. The Tyrells control one of the largest forces in all of Westeros. That could have basically changed it. And I think probably the strategy for the Rebellion would have had a change. I don't think there's any way in hell Robert meets them at the Trident if the Tyrells join up in that force. So, I'm not saying that it's 100% the Tyrells are going to win, but it's much more like likely that the Targaryens and Rhaegar specifically actually win the war Instead, he kind of does a Tywin, but he doesn't do it well. He kind of just sits at Storm's End and is sieging it. Which doesn't really matter. There's like maybe 200 guys there. Stannis is there. So again, maybe that, I mean, it keeps Stannis out of the war, I guess. But at the same time, it's just like you committed your entire force to basically playing at war. Now, again... Nothing comes of this, right? Because Mace Tyrell just bends the knee after Robert becomes king, and, and nothing really comes of this. The Tyrells don't really lose any power, which is a good thing. But they also didn't gain any power either. So it's one of those things where it's like, we're going to get into the cons as well. There is a another way you could look at the situation and take it a different way. So when we get to the cons um, for him being a fool, right? So this is him like actually being wise when we get to that part of it. I will have another counter-argument to that that I don't necessarily agree with, but it is some of the arguments people do use. So again, I think when you look at his house and their position, a lot of the credit should actually go to other people in his family, not to him, and I think that's what a lot of people kind of advocate when talking about if he's a fool or not. When you look at people like Olena, Olena is this character that very much so seems like the driving force behind House Tyrell. She's the one that kind of, I feel like, makes these maneuvers. 
Um, whether that's people like Tywin, people like Tyrion, she's the kind of the one that it seems like you go to her if you're trying to work something out with the Tyrells. So to me, when you look at a lot of Mace's accomplishments with his family, more often than not, I think we should be placing a praise in other places and not Mace. And I think that leads us to our third one. And this is one of those things where it's like, is he playing into the fool or not? But he seems like he is horrible at taking hints, especially with Cersei. Like this whole time, right, there's this idea that Mace Tyrell, I think it's at the Purple Wedding, if I'm not mistaken. Or around that period where he's like, oh, well, I'll be master of coin and keep suggesting it. And then like Cersei's just like, dude, no, like basically like subtly, like, no, you're never getting this. And he just can't take a hint. So, I, again, I don't know if that we're going to say that's him playing into that role or if he just doesn't take social cues well because it doesn't seem like he does. Um, I don't know. There's just a lot of situations where it seems like Mace Tyrell doesn't really understand what's going on. More so in the show. The show made him even more of a just straight-up idiot. Um, the book's not that, I guess, upfront with it. But it is definitely an interesting idea. Now, the next idea here is that this one, I, I feel like I don't know if I would go as far as saying, but this is something a lot of people bring up when they talk about Mace Tyrell being a fool, is that Varus is working to destabilize King's Landing, right? And he keeps alive Mace Tyrell, right? He kills Kevin Lannister, he kills Pycelle, people that were working towards kind of reestablishing the Lannister power. But I think the reason he does that is because one he could see a possible situation where the Tyrells betray the Lannisters and two I also think if you are looking at it he's trying to put Cersei against the Tyrells and if also mysteriously Mace Tyrell also dies okay well now Cersei's not like okay the Tyrells didn't do this this was probably Tyrion or something is what she would think so I don't know, and I know that Cersei's already going to think it's Tyrion because of the weapon Varys uses, but she's going to basically associate Tyrion with the Tyrells, and if Mace dies, she's not going to make that connection because why would the Tyrells kill one of their own? So this point to me is a little bit mute, but I did want to bring it up because it is something people argue. So now that's going to kind of get us towards more of the idea of is he actually wise? If we look at the circumstances of the War of the Five Kings, outside of magic, right, so Stannis' shadow baby, his daughter and Renly would have won the War of the Five Kings. And even when this situation fails, he also gets them with the Lannisters. Now again, I've talked about this with the pros for him being a fool. I don't know if I'd put that on Mace Tyrell, but that is something you have to look at their family, and they've been in a very good place up to this point. They've not lost really any troops and are, if not the most rich family, one of the riches and one of the most powerful in all of the kingdoms. Now, another interesting idea here is the entire small council is full of Tyrell loyalists at this point. Now, Kevin Lannister does this really to A, appease House Tyrell, because again... Cersei's been doing a terrible job pushing them away, fracturing the alliance, so he kind of has to do that. Kevin also kind of had this idea where all of these individual people, yes, are bannermen under House Tyrell, but how can we split them apart and make, you know, some of them maybe loyal to us instead? That's kind of how Kevin was thinking about it long term. And that's kind of stuff Tywin does as well. But when you think about it, Mace Tyrell getting all these people in his small council, more or less, is an achievement for House Tyrell, whether that's up to him or not on how that happens. Now, again, so let's go back to our Trebellion. Some people would argue that Mace Tyrell playing at war and kind of playing the full role actually served him well because it didn't really matter who won at the Trident. Either one, Rhaegar wins, and Mace Tyrell just looks like he was doing his job, but, you know, maybe he's just kind of a fool for not, you know, going to the Trident with them, but he was still being loyal to the crown. He was sieging the Baratheon, like, home, or capital, um, Storm's End. So, you have that part of it. Now, the flip side of it is, well, our Baratheon's just gonna, if he wins, he's gonna go, okay, well, Mace Tyrell is just an idiot, he's not somebody we kind of have to worry about, and also pissing them off just doesn't really make any sense. They'll bend the knee, we'll be fine. 
Also, the whole time, Mace Tyrell and the Tyrell like Bannerman will not lose any men in this at all because they will not be involved in any of the big battles. They'll just be in a siege. So when you look at it from the point of view of his people, his soldiers, his men, I mean, this was a smart choice. You, you don't lose anybody, right? And you could argue that, but I think if Mace Tyrell was someone that thought more like an Otto Hightower, a Tywin Lannister, um, a Littlefinger of Varys, you can obviously see that Mace Tyrell, if he wanted to, could have put his, uh, his family in a far superior position here. Because think about it also how this would have worked out. If the Tyrells join the Loyalist forces, would that push the Lannisters to go towards the Loyalist forces? Because it would be out, it would be like an amazing defeat if the Loyalist forces lost against Robert with the Tyrell forces. So to me, when you put all of that kind of together, it's an interesting conversation that we talk about with Mace Tyrell's decision making in Robert's Rebellion. Now, another thing we're going to put to his name, because it's probably true, Mace Tyrell at this point is probably the richest man in Westeros. So, regardless of if he's a fool or not, he is in that position. Again, a lot of what we talk about with Mace Tyrell is the position he's in or his family, is that because of him or is that because of other people? And that's what you have to ask yourself. And when if you guys comment on this video and on your thoughts on it, that's what you have to figure out on if he really is a fool or not. And the last point I made for him being wise is that he does set up pretty great marriage alliances. Like, they all seem to be very beneficial to his family. Now, again, we don't know if it's him specifically making these alliances or it's other people in his family. Which, again, I don't, we don't really know. Because it seems like the Renly alliance, Mace Tyrell really had nothing to do with. It seemed like that was more... Loras and maybe Marjorie than it was Mace. So again, you have to take it with a grain of salt. And that's kind of all of my evidence for both sides that I kind of picked up on doing a little bit of research and on this topic. So I'd love to know what you guys think. I mean, there's some other things maybe you can point to in the normal story and like Feast with how the Tyrells, there's this idea or theory they are kind of deceiving Cersei. And like, people like Loras are not actually hurt or anything. Like, he's perfectly fine. That's just been some false information told to her. I don't know. I don't want to go into stuff that we don't know too much yet. I, I want to stay with stuff that we can look at in the past and base it off of that if he's a wise or stupid person. But let me know what you guys think. I think my conclusion reviewing all this evidence is I think Mace Tyrell is somewhere in the middle. I don't think he's, like, this really stupid person. Like the show made him out to be, but I don't think he's actually very smart either. I think he's just kind of in the middle ground where he's an average intelligent person, maybe like a little less than average, put into a fantastic position. Where he has great people around him that can counsel him to do the best decisions. It, it's kind of like if you look at like, you know what Tywin was setting up with Tommen, right? Where Tommen, you need to listen to your counsel and all that. That's kind of how I look at it, where if Tommen had become king and he would say he had some great supporting cast, he had people like Tywin, let's say Tyrion didn't like do anything. Tyrion was there to support him. He had like other people like that. Marjorie is a good person that would be supporting him. That's kind of how I look at Mace Tyrell, where he's born into a very rich family. His mother's an extremely star smart woman. Um, Mace's children are extremely smart and or good at sword fight or whatever sword play. And his marriage alliances to the High Towers, probably the most important family in the Reach. Like, he's set up to be perfectly set up that he didn't really have to do anything, in my opinion. Um, I think he could have done more to make his house get further, um, but he didn't. So, thank you guys for watching the video. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on Mace Tyrell, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye, guys!